Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode where we're talking about how and why you should celebrate more after 50. Yes, I said celebrate. I think it's a big deal. And I think it's a good way to spend the next few minutes together doing whatever it is that you're doing. Are we walking together today? Doing the dishes? Putting on makeup? or even taking a shower together. That one cracks me up, but I had a call with somebody this week who cracked herself up as she told me that we did this together regularly because that's when she listened to the podcast when she took a shower. And you know what? I do that too. I love listening to podcasts. I have like a bench just outside the shower. I set my phone up there, being careful to make sure that the camera is not pointing anywhere near the shower so there's no mishap. (laughs) And I usually just kind of put my towel over it a little bit. Anyway, it's safe and secure. And I take a shower and listen to the podcast. I totally, totally love that. It's so funny. So ask yourself, let's get back to the celebration topic. Do you celebrate? Do you consider yourself someone who celebrates on the regular? When you think about the concept of celebration, what comes up for you? What comes to mind? For me, the first thing I think about is confetti. Isn't that funny? I looked it up, and it turns out that the custom of throwing things at celebratory events has been going on for hundreds of years, and confetti has come a long way, too. People used to throw things other than rice, candy, and paper. (laughs) They threw all kinds of things. The other thing that's happened is environmental and animal safety concerns were raised with the throwing of rice and certain kinds of confetti that aren't biodegradable. Now, there are so many additional, beautiful, eco-friendly confetti options that you can choose from, like freeze-dried flower petals. So much fun. So if you want to throw something when you celebrate, there are really good options for you. Now, you don't have to throw confetti every time you have something to celebrate, but I think it would be a fun idea. Just keep some in your pocket or your purse, and when something comes up, you're just ready, right? You've got the confetti, throw it. It would be fun. (laughs) I might do that. I would just love to see the reaction on people's faces. Anyway, what I would like you to do is to think about what it feels like to throw confetti and to be in that space where confetti is being thrown. How does it feel? Happy, exciting, hopeful, energetic, cheerful, delighted, fired up, exuberant, thrilled, fun. So good, right? Who wouldn't want to feel this way more often? (laughs) And what I also want you to think about today is why you might want to find more to celebrate about in the first place. Now, even at your age, now, even with everything else going on in the world, now, rather than someday when X or Y happens. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I could see the idea building over the last few years. The more I thought about it, the more I could also see that, you know what, I've been thinking about it more than a few years. It's been a couple of decades. Now, the second thing I think about when I think about celebration is the phrase glass half full. Does that phrase have meaning for you? It's used to kind of summarize a general mindset or view about the way someone looks at the world or a specific situation, either as glass half full or glass half empty. (laughs) It's often asked as a question to help you see if your view is more optimistic or pessimistic. The question, is the glass half full or half empty, illustrates that there are different perspectives and ways to look at things and perceive situations. As a listener of this podcast, you can probably see where I'm going with this. How you look at things, that is, how you think about things, situations, circumstances, that's optional. Your beliefs about the world create your mindset. Beliefs are a collection of your thoughts. And many people identify themselves as tending to be more pessimistic or more optimistic. Two, right? Do you think of yourself this way? Which one are you? Your thoughts create your feelings, even though it can feel like you're just one way or the other, period, right? Like it's part of your DNA. 
even though it seems like that, it's not really true. Your beliefs are thought based. And when it comes to this concept, I've always considered myself a glasses half full kind of gal, even though sometimes I find myself thinking that I have no business having that kind of mindset (laughs) because my childhood was particularly difficult. But I really do. I consistently see the world as glass half full in general, because my thoughts typically create that for me. It's not my DNA, but it is because of the way I think. Not always, but often. Now, as you understand so much more about mindfulness and the concept of thinking on purpose, you can really see that thinking is optional. So what that means is that even though I see that I usually think about life as glass half full, every time I think it, it's a choice. Your thoughts are up for discussion with yourself. Just because you think it, it doesn't have to be the end of the story. You can learn to manage your mind better and better and better and supervise what's going on up there. Now, I just wanted to set the stage a bit for this conversation. Confetti, just because it's an image that pops into my mind when I think about celebration, and the common question about life circumstances, is the glass half full or half empty? Those ideas. That's going to help us get in the mood to talk more about the art of celebrating your life more after 50. And I have some exciting news. This episode is sponsored by my new book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50. Get unstuck, avoid regrets, and live your best life. We need this too as an antidote to all the negative societal messaging around aging. So if you're thinking, there's got to be more out there for me, or wondering, why can't I figure out what I want and just get unstuck already? Or if you're asking yourself, how can I have more fun when turning 50 or being over 50 is such a bummer? Then this little book will help you. 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50 will help you change the way you think about midlife. Each chapter is filled with upbeat, encouraging midlife goodness. No matter what's going on in your life, you can usually find a way to turn up your creative volume and celebrate just a little bit more. So inside the book, you'll learn six different areas of your life that are important to celebrate, why midlife is the perfect time to invite more celebration into your life, and 50 powerful and easy ways to celebrate your life after 50. There are also 30 journal prompts and room for you to jot down your thoughts and reflections so that you push yourself to understand your mindset about this time in your life. Celebrating more like this helps you get unstuck, avoid regrets, and embrace what is truly possible at any age. 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50 is available now at your favorite online bookstores. Yay! So I just wanted to share that news with you. And here is what happened with the book. As I mentioned, I always knew that I thought of myself as a glasses half full kind of gal. But now I see that my thoughts are the reason that I feel this way. And the reason I feel that I do, it's just that's why it's your thinking. It's become more and more obvious to me as a coach because I now challenge all kinds of personal beliefs and help other women do the same sort of challenging with their own on the path to being more intentional with their lives. So learning to think on purpose is It's the best way to give yourself the most beautiful gift you can give, in my opinion. Really, it's the gift that keeps on giving, learning to think on purpose. This kind of thinking and thought work gave me the idea to take a closer look at the relevance of celebrating traditions in midlife. So way back, about 100 episodes or so ago, I interviewed someone about why you should celebrate traditions in midlife. That someone was my uncle. And the episode is episode 78, Why You Should Celebrate Traditions in Midlife with Bob Schneeweiss. It's also one of the few times that I've had a guy in as an honorary woman in the middle on the podcast. It's, it's quite a position to be in. <laughs> anyway, I've watched him over the years excel at the art of celebration. He is so good at it. He looks at all kinds of things as a reason to celebrate, to commemorate, to note in a more significant way. He sees small moments and larger type moments as celebration worthy. Why? Because it's fun. Because it makes you feel more alive and more grateful. Because it's meaningful. And because it helps focus you on the present moment. Now, you may have heard me talk about this before, but he does this cool New Year's tradition of identifying his top 10 days of the year. And he does this every year. At the end of the year, 
He sits down and starts to reflect on the year and makes a list. Then, when he confirms his list, he emails the people in his life who contributed to that top 10 day and expresses gratitude. Then, he files this list away in his drawer. Now, this stack of lists would probably make a great book. I'm just saying. (laughs) And if this idea wasn't cool enough, he shared a bit about what happens when he notices that he's on the brink of experiencing one of these special days. He used a word once to describe a bit of his process, and it really stuck with me. So how he shared it, he was talking about what happens when he realizes he's actually in the middle of experiencing a potential top 10 day of the year. And because it's a regular tradition, he has sensitized himself for awareness of what it feels like. And when he senses it, he actually makes a decision to amplify it. Now that right there is intentional celebration. Come on, can you imagine that? So after this interview... I was really thinking about it, and then it happened for me too. It was January 2019. I was on a business retreat in Huntington Beach in Southern California, and I planned to go on a whale watch the day before the retreat started. It was the first time I was meeting the other women at this business mastermind, and I was ready to go on the whale watch alone, but I knew it would be more fun with a new friend. So I asked in our Facebook group if anybody wanted to join me. One woman did. So we went ahead online and zoned in on the Newport Landing Whale Watch and figured out which time slot would work best with our flight, uh, you know, our flight times when we were arriving. And that's when I noticed something really interesting online. VIP seating on a whale watch. My eyes lit up. (laughs) Better seats, better viewing, fewer people, closer to the captain and staff. I was sold. Now I thought, okay, I'm a whale watching nerd. Is this woman I don't know? Does she also want to spend a little more money to get VIP seating? (laughs) She did. And away we went. Now remember, I had never met her before. Her name was Sessa. And my soon to be whale watching companion was into it. She had the best attitude. Now we only knew each other online and on Zoom, right? We met at the hotel just after she got out of her taxi from the airport. To our surprise and delight, we were wearing the same color jacket, which was bright pink. We looked like twins, except she was about a foot taller than me. (laughs) We laughed about that, too. So we made our way to the boat. We got settled in with our binoculars and our drinks. We took some selfies. We got to know each other. There was so much energy. We were gabbing nonstop. The sun was shining. We were heading out to sea and watching some sea lions frolicking about. It was so beautiful. I was so happy completely enjoying my time with a totally fun new friend. And then I felt it. It was a tingle, an energetic tingle. It was palpable. I heard myself thinking that this was going to be a top 10 day. I could totally tell. It kind of reminded me of whitewater rafting in the Grand Canyon. There's this sound that you hear and a feeling you get when you're approaching a big rapid. It's coming. It's coming. And you know it. You can't stop it. I had that kind of a feeling. And then I remembered what my uncle shared about his personal practice of the art of celebration. He amplifies it. He amplifies it. I got it. I understood what he meant. It was like capitalizing on the amazing. And I was all in. I made sure to experience it fully. I, I would just be more present. I would ask the guides more questions. I would be more vulnerable and engaging with my new friend. I would laugh more. I would focus more. I would be more of me all of it. And that is how I decided to amplify. I think it's just such a great example of how to celebrate. Let's briefly review why. When I first arranged to go on this business retreat, it didn't include a whale watch. And I was just I was just sitting home alone going, hey, where am I going? Let me look this place up on a map. Oh, Huntington Beach. Oh, it's on the water. I mean, it's got beach in the title of the town, right? So that means it must be like right on the ocean. I wonder if there's a whale watch nearby. There must be. Maybe I should check. So I checked to see if there was a whale watch. And then I rearranged my plan to arrive a day early, all according to the potential whale whale watch times. So that was the first thing I did. Then my second step was to invite a stranger to have more fun which is what I just told you about. And then my third step was full-on amplification 
when I got the feeling. So you can go from zero to celebrate and look for more ways to do it. And you can recognize a celebration possibility and amplify it to make it even better. These are just some ideas and examples, but they illustrate the point that once you prime your celebration muscle, you can easily welcome more celebration goodness into your life. So about my little book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, last year I did something to prime my celebration pump. I continued to think about that word amplify, and I chose it as my word of the year. Do you do that? I'm kind of new to this word of the year tradition, but I like it. A single word is easy to remember, and it can inform and shape your goals and vision for the year. It helps you focus. So January 2020 started off with a glorious bang. I amplified all kinds of things. I amplified my personal insights about my calendar and schedule and made, it, made some changes. I challenged myself to amplify my goals for an out-of-town retreat that I was hosting in Palm Desert, California, by looking for more cool ways to go multi-sensory on the lessons. And I ended up incorporating feeding giraffes into the theme of reaching forward and reaching up, reaching for more, pushing yourself. And then I also invited my best friend from high school to be the yoga instructor to teach a short class out in the desert. So when I put all these ideas together, I was giddy with my plans and how I watched myself create them by the way I prioritized celebration and having more fun. I amplified my ability to leverage an opportunity to create even more joy by recognizing the place that I rented for my retreat would be the perfect place to also get together with some of my favorite colleagues for a personal business retreat. And my whale-watching friend Sessa was one of the participants just after the mastermind retreat. So that's the other thing I did. I had this mastermind retreat. I was all giddy about what I'd planned for it. And then I went, hey, this is a beautiful space. What would it be like if I invited some of my business colleagues and we did some personal business masterminding in the space that I've already rented? I could rent it for longer. And, you know, it was really just pushing myself. These ideas did not come to me right away. It was that word of the year amplify that really, really helped me. That whole month felt like a celebration to me. Now, for sure, the rest of 2020 did not go as planned. (laughs) I'm not minimizing that. But identifying the word amplify definitely helped me up the celebration ante over the year. And that's when the idea came to me. Maybe this little idea was book worthy. And that's what I explored. And that's what was hatched a tiny book about 50 ways to celebrate life after 50, specifically in six areas of your life. I think these six areas are pretty important, actually, and have become really attached to helping other people focus on them. It's obvious to me now that I have been working with midlife women since 2014, and these six areas come up again and again as something that needs to be prioritized especially prioritized for celebration. So like I said, they've come up again and again for me and again and again for other amazing women in the middle. These six areas of your life are the ones that are definitely worthy of more celebration and they are the following. Your age, your self-care, your passion, your relationships, your professional self, and your empty nest. Now, as I said earlier, I like to think of this little book as a slice of upbeat, encouraging midlife goodness. I share six short personal stories that help illustrate why I think it's important to celebrate more in these areas of your life. I also talk about why it matters to celebrate in these categories, and I give you 30 interesting questions to ask yourself to dig a little deeper, and there's room to jot down your thoughts and answers. Of course, There's also 50 easy ways to celebrate your life after 50, and they're integrated throughout the little book. It's a book that's easy to read and easy to apply to your life. And if you're curious enough, your path forward could also include more laughter, insight, commitment, and an open mind to create and allow more happiness. Now, how great is that? I mean, really, ask yourself, if not now, When? What are you waiting for? 
Why wouldn't you want to celebrate more? This whole celebrate your life thing is really important too because it's related to a common regret. And you know, we're always trying to regret proof our lives around here on the Women in the Middle podcast. (laughs) In her popular book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, author Bronnie Ware identifies this theme as a common regret that people regret not allowing themselves to be happier. Notice the word allow. That is such a powerful word in this context, right? It's a reminder that happiness is a choice. And that's because happiness is a feeling that's created by a thought. So when you create a mindset that is full of the belief that your life is a cause for celebration and that it's a worthy activity for you to prioritize, it starts to become easier for you to also get your head around how important it is to celebrate on purpose. This is an excellent example of something that you can think on purpose too, something that you can create on purpose. And that is my challenge to you. Come up with even more ways to celebrate your life after 50. Let my 50 ways only be the beginning. Trust me, celebrating more like this helps you get unstuck. It helps you avoid regrets and it helps you get more comfortable with and embrace what's actually possible for you, all the opportunities. Now, at your age, at any age, and now really is the perfect time to turn up the volume and amplify opportunities for more celebration in your life. Again, the name of the book is 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, and your copy is just waiting for you to order. Actually, it's, it can't wait. It can't wait to get into your hands, your heart, and your head. <laughs> kind of like mind, body, and soul reference, you know what I mean? So if you're ready to celebrate more, let's do this together. Okay, that's it for this episode. As you know, my focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning and feeling stuck about aging, about empty nest, about relationships, about your career, about being more compassionate toward yourself, about all of it. It's time to get excited about your life again. For show notes and links, head over to www.coachwithsusie.com. To buy the book, 50 Ways to Celebrate Life After 50, go to www.50waystocelebrate.com. That's 50waystocelebrate.com or your favorite online bookstore. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first, one celebration at a time. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week.